Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Tanks Xbox 360 edition. I am Knight in Phoenix. Today I have some gameplay from Grey Ghost and he is playing his AT-15 which is the British Tier 8 tank destroyer. The map is Ensk and it is the war variation. Okay, so Grey Ghost spawned in the southeast corner of the map. He's going to make his way up to the northeast corner. I did speed this part up to three times normal speed. Figured no sense watching him traverse from one end of the map to the other. Unless you guys enjoy the scenery, let me know and uh, I'll be glad to just put it in at normal speed. You know, the AT-15 has a top speed of around 20 kilometers an hour. Well, if we had a uh, three times speed button in the game, there'd be a lot of happy AT-15 drivers. So at this point, it appears none of the enemy have uh, pushed to the east here. Normally when you come down the eastern line there, you end up with a whole bunch of guys in front of you. Yeah, it could be their team is made up of uh, city fighters and no open field fighters. At any rate, it should give Greg Ghost a pretty good opportunity to uh, move in unopposed. So the first target Greg Ghost gets color on is an A43. I honestly have no clue what that is. So takes his first shot, gets a little over 200 damage. Second shot looks like it hit uh, one of the dead railroad cars in front. Just one of the things you kind of have to be aware of in World of Tanks. If you can get color on a vehicle, that entire vehicle will have a uh, colored outline. Even if part of that vehicle is not hittable, if he's behind a rock or a pile of rubble or a train car, his outline will still be complete. And obviously the only thing you can hit is parts that are actually exposed. So Gregos took a uh, auto-aim shot at the T-28 to do some damage. He did take a second auto-aim shot while traversing over the railroad tracks. And his shell did promptly go into the dirt. Okay, so Grey Ghost continues to move forward. We have a, a Black Prince on the other side of the building here. Black Prince bounces a shot off of Grey Ghost. Grey Ghost takes a return fire, but uh, just completely misses him. I don't know what happened to his gun there. And you can hear Grey Ghost holding down his fire button. You can hear the clicking. And I'm sure the thing everybody's going to notice here is that Grey Ghost aiming vertical was uh, on the turret. And it certainly appears that the AT-15 is incapable of penetrating the turret. So it does back up a little bit, uh, looks down, starts taking some shots into the lower plate. And we can see while Gregos held the Black Prince in place, uh, one of his teammates, Navy Blue, came over and uh, gave him an assist and got the kill on it. So kudos to Navy Blue for helping out there. Alright, so the immediate threat has been taken care of. No targets in the general vicinity. So, time to move on and find something else to shoot at. So, part of playing these war variants of, of the new maps is figuring out how to get around. Especially in Ents, there's a lot of um, your normal paths are blocked with rubble. You come around a corner, uh, something you're used to playing, and all of a sudden you're trapped what with no place to go, and you are uh, in trouble. I personally think adding all this extra debris, the rubble, blocking off the normal corridors, you know, it, it lets the game develop in um, more than one direction. KV1S, you know, KV1 where the, the normal maps KV1. tend to be very uh, dimensional, one dimension, linear. When we get these face-to-face -face battles here, you can come from all different sides and angles. Alright, so he found something else to shoot at. Uh, takes a couple of hits into the T-32. He did track the T-32, but obviously he had a repair kit he could use, and he is now gone. Not gone out of the game, but moved on. So now he has two T-32s over to his right. They may be trying to flank him, but because of the uh, all the extra debris and cutoffs here, they really can't get around the side of this. Now T-32 did get some damage on him, uh, but he still has him in front of him. And Grey Ghost returns fire, does an auto lock, and it does bounce. I notice that the majority of the uh, auto lock, auto aim shots that he takes do uh, bounce or just completely miss the target. 
And it's when Greg goes, takes the time and actually goes into sniper mode, takes the shot that he actually gets to hit in the kill. So he does deal with uh, both T-32s. He now has three kills. He now has the side of a Super Pershing, does 206 damage on him, and an ISU-152 with hardly any health left. Takes the shot and finishes him off. Got four kills, a uh, good portion of his health left, and he's moving on. Finds the rear end of a KV-3, puts a shot into him, looks like it hangs him up, he's just sitting there rocking or something. Gets a second shot, and the third shot finishes him off. There he goes, he got an IS-3 While he's dealing with the targets in front of him, we can hear Navy Blue warning him that there is an IS-3 coming up behind him. As you're aware, the AT-15 does not have a turret, and it does not turn very well at all. And that's what happens when you let somebody get behind you. Not that he could do anything about it. And the game ends up being a defeat due to uh, the enemy capping our base. Would have been nice if they could have capped about five seconds earlier and let Grey Ghost live. Okay, so Grey Ghost did manage to make 18,500 silver and just under 1,300 experience on that one. He did do 13 damaging shots and he did manage five kills on that. And he did come in second place with the top uh, four players getting almost 80% of the kills on the team. So the AT-15 may be slow to get to the battle, but once it's there, it can certainly hold its own. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. You'll get notifications of when I post new videos. And as always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.